The Booth Museum was the private museum of Edward Booth, a Victorian ornithologist. In those days, if you wanted to study birds, you needed to shoot them. He was taught how to stuff birds by a barber in Hastings. And in those days, there were three firms of taxidermists in Brighton, because of course, fashion meant that people wore furs, uh, you wore feathers in your hats, um, and because of the interest in natural history in Victorian times, everybody had a stuffed bird in their parlour. The only thing more valuable than feathers in the late 1800s was diamonds. You had people collecting for the fashion industry, causing the extinctions of birds such as the passenger pigeon. And even Booth himself writes about how abhorrent the feather trade is when he observes people standing on the cliffs at Beachy Head shooting at the kitty wakes flying over to kill the birds to collect the feathers and describing injured birds drowning in the sea. Children will be more scared by things you wouldn't expect, like the bear will scare them. Um, but they can cope with a seagull pecking a sheep's eyes out. Uh, whereas others really don't like that at all. These are sort of dead creatures, they don't see them as, as dead. And just, you know, run around and, and look for things they recognise and look at the skeletons and the teeth. There was a man in Rottingdean who collected skeletons. And it was just his hobby. And it went so far as him boiling up his two pet dogs. In those early days, remains were not treated with quite the same reverence. Taxidermy is only one way of preserving the birds and other animals in the museum. Um, and of course, because you're producing a skin, you throw away the guts, the insides of the animals. Another way of preserving these, though, is preserving them whole in alcohol or in formaldehyde. He was working on ornithology collecting birds by shooting them in 1860s onwards. No binoculars, no cameras worth talking about. But his idea was to recreate the natural surroundings in which the birds live. And so he built cases, glazed cases with a glass front. And the idea of these dioramas was picked up by museums around the country and around the world. So this is a good example of one of Booth's diorama cabinets. It's a couple of robins. So it's got the tools that the gardener was using, uh, one of the gardener's gloves. The twigs are all uh, real twigs. The planking around the back is actually plaster, made to look like fence posts. Um, and then the ivy was made from bits of cloth. The wider collections include bird skins, bird eggs, butterflies, other insects, shells basically anything from the natural world that you can think of. Sea slugs. Oh my god, I love sea slugs. <laughs> and I love um, jellyfish, um, nidaria, like corals, jellyfish, anemones, really weird creatures. Since working on this butterfly project, I've pretty much come and done butterflies for months and months and months. You have to be meticulous, organised, um, good attention to detail, really careful. Butterflies are very delicate, they've got lots of bits that stick out. It's absolutely endless work and then there's care as well. If you like it, the museum, I think it kind of captures your imagination. We also have artists who use it as a source of inspiration and people who, who like the slightly gothic element. And so there is a whole sort of gothic um, side to taxidermy. And of course the public are always bringing us things to identify. A lady rang me and said she had a, a fossil she wanted to come and show me. 
I said, yes, bring it in, but can you give me an idea what, what it is? She said, yes, it's a fossil bird. So what, what she brought me was, was, was this item here. It's not a bird, it's a piece of flint. I said, well, of course it looks like a bird because you've painted it to look like a bird. And I spent two hours with this lady trying to convince her that it wasn't possible. She wrote a book later. She had her own ideas about various things to do with evolution and fossils. She referred to me in her book as some museum official. My friends fairly new to the area and she said that it's a great place to go with children. She hadn't been here yet, wanted to have a look around, so, uh, and it's free. <laughs> School trip, yeah. <laughs> we are visiting Brighton yeah. and London. Came to visit because I really loved, you know, all these things and natural things and animals. It's really cool because we are seeing like animals I've never seen before. Yeah. And like the dodo. Uh, yeah, thing. the dodo. We're not just like a dusty old relic. It's really easy for people to come in and be like, oh wow, this is a Victorian collection by a really weird, strange man. <laughs> um, but beyond that, lots of scientific research going on. It looks like this is a big part of the past, but we want to advocate for the future and use our collections to teach people how to look after their environment. Simple things like planting flowers in your garden that will encourage bees to come in. You know, these little things that will actually, when they're all put together, they make a big difference. The thing that we need to focus on is actually empowering people to get involved in local groups like Sussex Wildlife Trust, volunteer. It's all really good for your, your well-being as well, you know, to go out on the downs. It's global issues tackled on a local level. Yeah, Mr Booth was a proper ornithologist and he produced a book which he published in three volumes. And I've forgotten the name.